You know, first question I have to ask, whatever inspired you to write this book? And was there any specific event or idea that initially sparked this book? Like, what sparked it? Well, actually, just me being who I am, that spiritual, indigenous healer, African traditional healer, and over the years doing many readings and hearing, you know, constant, you know, clients talking about their dreams about me, my dream, you know, questions. So pretty much all of the spiritual energy, whether it's readings, whether it's, you know, talking to clients or dreams that I've had or messages and, you know, downloads that I've gotten from my cosmic beings and my sea beings is what inspired this book. Oh, wow. People have dreams about you. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I had about maybe 12 or I'm going to say at least 15 people who had dreams about me. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, what I find interesting as well is when I started reading the comments on Instagram and Facebook, everybody's um, favorite chapter was the Antarctica chapter and the one about the repetitive numbers. Can you get into that a little bit? Sure, sure. And Artica, you know, what's funny about that one is because when I was, you know, finishing up the book, and Artica was going to be the last chapter um, that I wrote. And Spirit said, no, make an Artica the first chapter that you wrote. And it was crazy because the person who I edited in the book, that's the first thing that caught her attention. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, I love that you're writing about Antarctica. And she was excited and that, you know, and I said, okay, so spirit was right. Spirit speaks to me all the time. So I, um, you know, started talking about Antarctica. I had visions and a lot of people know me on YouTube for having or being able to scry into different places. I did it in Egypt. I did it in Kem well, Kemet, as we know it. Originally, I've done it there. I've been able to scry in the waters of Antarctica. So I had a vision and I was shown this vision by the cosmic beings that some of these beings come through Antarctica and that they meet in Antarctica and the world leaders come together and meet in Antarctica to talk about what's going on with the world. So that's the first chapter that I, you know, decided to write. It was the last chapter, but Spirit said, no, make it the first because that's going to catch people's attention. So that's one of the chapters that's my favorite and um, that a lot of people are saying they like as well. And then the chapter of repetitive numbers. Now, we know everybody and their mother is uh, pretty much asking questions. They're saying 111, they're saying 222, 333, and a lot of people are wanting to know what does that mean. Now, there's different meanings in different cultures, different meanings for those uh, repetitive numbers, Okay. And I do write that in the book. I talk about the African meaning and I talk about the European meaning and the Chinese meaning of the different repetitive numbers. Um, just to give you a brief example, 111 is, first of all, you'll see your birthday first, okay? That's letting you know that you're getting ready to go through your physical, spiritual transformation. And then you'll see 111. That means your ancestors are actually surrounding you and getting ready to guide you on this transformational, uh, you know, transformational phase. And then when you see two, that's the mind and the, uh, the body has come to, excuse me, I'm sorry, two is the, is the mind and three is the body. So you have the mind, body, soul, and the, and the guidance of the ancestors that are actually um, getting ready to take you on this journey of going through your physical, spiritual transformation. Oh, that's interesting. I know at the beginning of that answer, you mentioned that you see or scribe to Egypt. I would like to hear more about that, but we'll get to that to the, at the end okay. of the interview. Okay. So I, I'll ask you more about that later. Okay. So, well, being that you got most of this information from your visions, what type of research did you do for this book? I did the research as far as, you know, explaining to people how the DNA works, but as far as how I know is because the spirit told me so. Wow. I break down stuff that people already know that, that, You'll find, you know, in education, such as the DNA. I talk about the DNA, the junk DNA. Now, some people say, well, how do you know the DNA is not junk DNA? Because Spirit told me so. And Spirit told me that they're saying that it's junk DNA. It's not. Spirit also told me that 
we use more strands of our DNA than they say that we use, especially the people who are spiritual or very gifted use more than 3% of their strands. Not only that, they also have access to what they call that junk DNA. So, no. Very I, interesting. So, um, is there a particular chapter or subject that you just really, that was really your favorite to talk about in this book? Yes. Egypt, Kemet. Yes, because I've done scrying into Egypt. I've done scrying into Kemet or whatever you want to call it, okay? Now, why it's my uh, favorite uh, chapter is because for years there was arguments about how the pyramids were built. Everybody would argue. Some say it was this way. Some say it was that way. Some say it was built from down up. Spirit showed me that at one time, that Kemet used to be a stone city, nothing but stone. And it was carved out with high-tech lasers, okay? This was spiritual me, high-tech lasers. Not only that, the Sphinx, every pyramid you see in Cairo or, or Egypt or Kemet was actually carved out with these high-tech lasers. But I was also shown that at one time, that that same city was sunk under the sea. And it was many years later that when it rolls back up, okay, they're still trying to figure out why the Sphinx has water marks around it. They don't understand why they come up with all these theories. But it's because that city went under the sea at one time, in one age, okay? This is what Spirit showed me. That's interesting because a lot of people always say that it was flooded purposely. So you're saying that the being showed you that it was underwater. It was underwater, right. Wow. And then it rolls back up. Then they also showed me under the Sphinx, from, okay, from the Sphinx, the back of the butt of the Sphinx going down underground to the three Giza pyramids, they showed me that there were water down there and that these blue water, and it was blue water. And I think a couple of months later, they ended up showing a documentary about that and showing that there was blue water. After I was scrying uh, um, in the pyramids on YouTube. And then they showed me uh, that there was little tunnels, little walkways you go through. They showed me there was some blue water that actually connected to all type of um, pyramids around the world and also to Antarctica. And there's still a connection to the pyramids and what is that? Uh, Atlantis. Atlantis. That's what I was showed in my visions when I was crying. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. You say you were scrying. Okay. So, you know, I've, there's Egypt is like the number one subject written about in all of books. Only thing maybe in front of that is maybe the Bible. <laughs> so what sets your book apart from all the other books? What sets my book apart from other books? It's educational and it answers a lot of people's questions. And it teaches them that everything that you hear from man is not necessarily correct. And that's why it's good to go into spirit and get the answers from spirit. Because every man has a theory or thought. And then when people begin to argue or debate about it, they'll say, well, no, Egypt is this and this and You know, they debate about it and nobody knows nothing because they haven't sat down and went to actual spirit and actually asked the universe to show them. I get into... Um, different things that people have questions about dreams. I talk about dreams, certain dreams, and there's a lot of people love cats. So in the book, I talk about the lions. Some people don't even know who the lions are. They don't even think they come from another planet, but they do. So a lot of people love cats and own cats. So I talk about that in the book. So there's a lot of educational things that people can learn. They can get from this book. It's just not uh, a book for, you know, people just to read for fun is actually actually giving you some good information okay so oh, okay. I would say that that's different than maybe some books people you know are reading it's not a novel it's not a fictional book it's not a you know just a dream book I got other things in there so this well. not this book is based on spiritual visions and visions things you've seen and, dreams, and not just right. like because in the scientific community, sometimes they think they know, sometimes they guess, sometimes it's just just a guess. Mm -hmm. So Or a theory, like you said. So that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, I haven't seen many 
books written from a spiritual aspect when it's dealing with Kemet and this is talking about the rituals they did or the magic they performed. Mm -hmm. But to me, I, I think that they don't even really know that. I think some of that stuff they get wrong as well. They don't. A lot of times they don't go into spirit. Sometimes they'll interpret it from the, or try to interpret it from the hieroglyphics, but they really don't. My, 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 my message to people in humanity is don't take man's word for it. Go into spirit yourself. If you got to sit in the pyramids and go ask and call down them spirits to ask, they're going to give you the answers that you seek most of the time. Okay. So, okay, so in this book, is there anything that the, the, um, the beings or the spiritual beings have showed you that you had to do in real life or came to pass in real life in front of your eyes? Well, there's many types of spiritual beings. There's the cosmic beings. There's the, there's the sea beings, okay? As you all know, some of you may know from radio days and the YouTube day, you know, doing YouTube, my maternal side, Cabo Verde, Africa, is surrounded by 10 islands. <clears throat> and we're surrounded by nothing but water. So most of the gods we deal with are water gods, okay? Very powerful gods. So there is times when they'll alert me to come to the sea so we can do offerings to them. We did one last August 2023, and we had to put a lot of food out there. But what was crazy is when we were coming, the tides were so high and the water was going crazy because they knew we were coming. Right. So that's a real experience that we have. They talk to me all the time. Right. Another time uh, I got an experience with the cosmic beings. Now, we do know there's a connection between the ancient comedic people and the cosmic beings. When I was alerted that we had to go and we had to raise up the energy and the spirits of the ancient ancestors, Ankenaten you know, all the, the high priests and the pharaohs, we had to raise up the energy. I was told I had to do that. I heard them. They talk to me all the time. I have an ancient shrine set up, but they communicate with me. So whenever they alert me to do that, I do that. One more uh, experience I had, they told, uh, they told me to tell humanity that we had to ground ourselves, take off your shoes. And they said that we had to do one week, one week, nothing but green vegetables. It's not because of the, you know, uh, what do you call that in... Um, you know, you know, the uh, chlorophyll, chlorophyll in the plants. Yeah. It wasn't just because of because whatever we were going to get from those plants was going to help with our physical, spiritual transformation. So I was, I heard it one day to get up, tell humanity, do a show, tell humanity to get up and ground themselves, walk barefooted on the earth and do nothing but one week of greens. Mm. Okay. So those are real experiences that I, I experienced with communicating uh, with the sea beings and the cosmic beings. Wow, wow. So it seems like um, the beings were saying that there's a transformation coming with the in the DNA of the plants, and they wanted the humans to ingest that. So correct. So they, they could go through a transformation. Right. Wow, exactly. wow. That's you know I always say we are universes amazing. within universes. When we walk outside, we walk into ourselves. So we are truly a part of the all. So when they alerted me to do that, we had to go and just whatever we needed from those actual plants, okay? Wow, okay. Yeah. Um, what do you think will resonate the most, like, in this book? What will resonate the most, or what do you hope resonates the most with your readers when they read the, uh, the book, The Cosmic Oracle? Everything. Everything. People have questions, and sometimes they're afraid because people might think they're crazy. Interesting, very interesting. Let me ask you this. Are there any real life experiences or things you went through personally that um, expired anything in this book that you write about? Just anything that you've experienced? Personally, getting visitations from the lions and talking to them and them coming into my dreams. Wow. What was that yeah. like? I wasn't surprised because I've been a lover of cats all my life. Always loved cats. Always had cats. My mother always had cats, you know. So I wasn't surprised, but it was interesting because they shared a lot of information with me, you know, about dreams, about magical things that they did. I mean, it was very interesting to experience the things that they would share with me and teach me in my dreams. So, yeah, that was an experience I would say that was one that was real special. And I love cats. I have three right now. I have three. 
You say interesting, interesting how? Interesting how? Because they shared different things with me about their life. They shared, you know, you know, magical things that they can do. You know, and not only that, you know, the line is they communicate telepathically. And ever since I was a little girl, I would telepathically communicate with my cats. I had a connection with them, right? So pretty much, you know, it was interesting that they came to teach me more about how they were and the magical things they could do, which you'll see it if you read the book. I talk about it in the book, so. That's yeah. interesting because every time I'm around cats, I swear I feel like they're talking to me in my head. They do. <laughs> they do. Some people don't know, though. They're not paying attention. But if you just sit there and you sit quietly and communicate with them telepathically, you'll hear what they're saying. They'll talk back. Okay. That's interesting. Yes. This is, so far, this book is sounding very interesting. Um, are there any plans for a sequel, like another, uh, you know, doing another part two of this book? You know, I thought about doing a part two. I don't know. I might. I might. Um, I, I was thinking about maybe doing a part two about the dreams, more getting more into the dreams, because so many of my clients have told me that they have dreams about me, and every time I turn around, I'm in their dreams. And it's like, maybe I should do a book about that so people can understand how this spiritual stuff works, because everything I'm doing is spiritual. One of my clients told me she had a dream that I shape-shifted into honey, right? It was kind of funny. I shape-shifted. And then she, one of them told me they had a dream that I was protecting her from these giant aliens and I was communicating with them and they were listening to me and I was helping them. And then I had another client that told me about a dream where I was chasing away an ancient, ancient de deity that looked sort of like a Ganesha, but it wasn't. So I think I'm going to share these dreams because I'm getting constant clients calling me and saying, I dreamt of you last night. And it's always something spiritual. So I might do a part two. Maybe I'll call it the Cosmic Oracle, The Dreams, okay? But I do have a book that's coming out very soon. And it's called <laughs> The Secrets of Cabo Verde, Africa. The, 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 the Secrets of the Mysterious Merwomen, okay? Wow, so, that's look, interesting. So, yeah. Um, are these going to be beings never talked about? Because I don't hear a lot of people talking about anything coming out of Cabo Verde as well, far as Cabo spiritual Verde, stuff. They're, more a little, they're a little bit more sacred, you know, almost like the Haitians where they hide behind the Catholicism. Mm -hmm. But trust me, there's some, there's some spiritual stuff for your behind that comes out of that sea. Remember, they're surrounded with nothing but water, nothing but the Atlantic Ocean. So... These beings are really not heard of unless you live in Cabo Verde. And then there was a story, which is really not a mytho mythological story. People like to say this, but that the women from Cabo Verde were actually merwomen. And you'll be able to tell which ones are merwomen or not. But this is, these are real stories, okay? People think they're fake, but they're not. Um, there's a lot of different sea beings that come out of that water. And there's so much more y'all will see in the book, I'm going to tell you magic tradition with you know certain certain rituals that would be done there's a lot that people wow. don't know because you have to go to the island to see there, it's not it's not uh exposed sort of like ifa or khan or those traditional you know south african shamans it's not exposed they're very sacred with it mm. but it's very very powerful sea um things like this seven years really seven wonders of the sea so there's a lot that i'm gonna talk about in the book um, that I'm, I can't wait to share because everybody loves mermaids. Wow, wow. You said, so you mentioned rituals. Will there be any r rituals uh, I may share. I may share. In this I book? may share a few. Okay, okay, Because okay. these are the type of rituals that you don't want to play with. These sea beans are no joke. And yeah. when I say no joke, if I call a bean, I, I, let me give you an example. I'll give you one example of the book, at the, you know, and then we'll do another interview another time. But... There's certain beings, these women, word women, that will stir up of, uh, uh, the water in the sea that bring you your hurricanes. And you all know that most of your hurricanes blew up off of Cabo Verde, Africa, a Cap Verde or Cape Verde, however you want to say it. And a lot of people don't know these are the beings under the sea because there has to be a cleansing that takes place. So when these hurricanes are coming on hurricane season, these are the beings stirring up that energy. That's, that's, I'm, I'm going to leave you all with that, okay? 
So look out for that book. Secrets of, Secrets, Secrets of the Mer Woman. Cabo Verde, Africa. Okay. Okay, we got one last question. Um, what advice would you give any uh, aspiring authors that are writing their book or working on their book right now? Don't. The best advice I can give you is get it done. Don't um, procrastinate because mm -hmm. you never know. Not only that, I had a book I wrote before this that I haven't even published yet. And that one is called That We Are Universes of the Year. Sometimes it can take you years to write books. But don't ever give up. I put that book aside to write this one because I like to go with, you know, spirit when spirit speaks, right? So my thing to inspiring authors, don't, don't give up. You, it may take you a few years to get your books done, but get them done. Because you have a story to tell, whether it's fiction. Some people love fiction, you know, but there's some good stories in fiction. You may have a story to somebody. Your book may be inspiring to someone who needs your book. So don't give up. Just know that it does take time. Sometimes you'll get writer's block, you know, which I did. But I made a designated day that I would just write my books. Wednesday is my designated day. Nobody can call me. Nobody can bother me. I'm working on my books. So if you really want to get your books out soon, then make a designated day. There's times when, again, you'll get a writer's block, but it's okay. When you get right, put it down and go back next to the next day that you plan to and write your book. But don't not share your information. Don't not, you know, write your books. If you have a book idea, get it done because there's many, many authors and many, many books and many books that can help or help, you know, heal or anything for people, okay? Okay. That's the best advice um, before we go, is there any social medias that you want to share? Facebook, Instagram. First, uh, let me say this is the book. They can find the book on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, pretty much any book source. Google it and you can buy it from anywhere. Um, you can check out my Facebook page, Nikki Love Wunam, or Nikki Love on Facebook page. We have YouTube, Nikki Love Wunam. That's N I C K Y L O V W U L O V E. I'm sorry. W U N is a Nancy A M because people will spell it wrong. So it's Nikki N I C K Y Love and then Wu Nam. And then you can find me on Instagram, the same as Nikki Love Wu Nam. You can find me on Twitter as Nikki Love Wu Nam. So it's the same on all the social media. Be sure to come support, check us out. And um, uh, you got a TikTok? I do have a TikTok. Is it Wu Nam and a Dinkwa.com? No, Wu Nam and a Dinkwa. Wu Nam, W U N A M. And A N D, and then it's Adinkra, A D I N K R A. Wound on Adinkra, and that's on TikTok. Also, family, check out our YouTube page. We have a couple of shows going on. We have a show called Voodoo Chronicles that we tell stories and we randomly stop people and start doing readings for them. Check out our, Vo our Voodoo Chronicles. We have the Spiritual Vault where we do readings every month and we tell you what we see. Uh, you know, for the month of the readings, we also do New Year's predictions. So we have the Spiritual Boat, Voodoo Chronicles. Check us out. Look for us on YouTube as well, Nikki Love Wunam. And that's it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Wunam Nikki Love. <laughs>